Nathan, congratulations on your Hall of Fame induction on Thursday night. I thought you spoke wonderfully well. Thanks, Hutch. How much of your time now is spent on the now as opposed to next year when you've got a massive job on your hands to transition Mick out and yourself in? Yeah, probably, probably 90-10 on now. Um, I think in the end, Collingwood, as every club would, goes through a strategic planning process and we look at um, you know, what the future is going to look like and, and different things that we might have to put in place. Traditionally, that'll be done through the CEO, the footy manager and the senior coach, but it's a little bit of a different scenario. But um, you know, fundamentally, every person that's at the club wants to win every week and we want to maximise the opportunities this year. So my, my entire focus, well, not my entire focus, but the majority of it is all about making sure that we, uh, we make every post a winner at the moment. There's such an uncertainty about the transition that fascinates all of us and you get asked questions endlessly. Your recruiting manager, Derek Hines, out of contract, your fitness advisor in David Butterfin has been so successful out of contract yep. and to the outside world we don't know what mixed role will be. They're three pretty big things for you to deal with in one go. How do you feel about the uncertainty around all three? Yeah, there's a lot of uncertainty from the outside, um, not so much internally. Uh, we're going through and in, in currently in negotiations with all of those guys and well, with the first two primarily. Uh, Mick has a contract in place. But, um, Are you putting pressure on that to get those guys signed as, as the in, coming in coach? They're definitely you know, key members of the, of the team at the moment and ones that we'd like to stay in place. Um, the, I think the, the dynamic at the moment is, is quite interesting. Obviously there is some speculation from the outside, but we want to keep good people at the football club. Um, we believe it's a good place to be and um, you know, we're trying to uh, lock down as many of those good people as we can. Cara's got some questions for you in time too, but one last one on that for me. Do you want Mick Mouldhouse in the coach's box next year? I don't know if it'll happen in the coach's box, but I do feel that Mick has a role to play um, from a mentor role. I know that he and Purdy have had discussions. Uh, Mick and I have spoken occasionally about um, what that role looks like, but, um, and he said himself that it, he feels it needs to be commensurate with his standing in the game, and, and we're very keen to make sure that happens. But occasionally doesn't sound like it, very, a lot of certainty, does it? Like it must, must be ambiguous at the moment, to, to, even to you as the... As the Coach him waiting. Yeah, well, the thing that's not ambiguous is he has a three-year contract beyond the end of this year, and he said himself that he plans to honour it. Except that um, Trevor Nisbet, his old CEO, loves him. Nick Maxwell, uh, Darren Jolly, I think we spoke to a few weeks ago on 3AW, all say they wouldn't be surprised, given that he's at the top of his game, if he might go and coach elsewhere. That's the uncertainty, isn't it? And that's why we're, we're interested in these other key architects of the Premiership who haven't re-signed also, where they might go if he goes. Yeah, well, I, I suppose there is. There's always an uncertainty about it. Um, I suppose all we can say is that um, that he is contracted, and he said himself that he's uh, that he's keen to stay and plans to honour that contract for the next three years. So I don't know where you can go from that. I'm looking forward to seeing you start next year as a senior coach. I think you obviously you've had a great schooling over the last two years. What do you think about the prospect of starting your coaching career at a team that's just won two flags in a row? It'd be a good problem to have, first and foremost. <laughs> um, look, I, I suppose every coaching, um, every coach is going to have, go through a different pathway and uh, that would be quite unique, pathway to, uh, to travel down. But it's uh, going to have its own challenges, uh, the same as it would if a, if a coach, uh, and we traditionally would come into sort of lower sides that have finished lower in the ladder and then you have to build a club. Um, I don't feel that um, even if we don't win the Premiership this year that I'm, I'll be in a situation of having to rebuild a football club. But what you will be trying to do is maintain the positives and then and, and uh, improve the weaknesses so that you can be better in three to five, seven years' time. And um, if I didn't feel I could have an impact there, then I wouldn't still have my hand up. Bucks, just a couple of coaching questions. Um, next year, you're going you're gonna to do at least one thing differently. What's the most... Or the biggest thing that you can see you're going to do differently next year to how the clubs run this year? Yeah, fair question. Um, I think um, by saying that I'm going to be uh, denigrating perhaps part of the structure at the moment, so it's probably fraught with danger. But I, I, I do feel that uh, we probably could have the football in our hands a little bit more. Uh, I think the balance of um, the balance of um, offloading players and keeping them fresh and getting enough work in them to maximise their development is something that you need to adhere to. Um, I feel we've got a fairly good balance at the moment for our senior players. Yeah. 
Uh, but I think uh, I'd like to get uh, the ball in the hands of the young players a little bit more. OK. And just <coughs> in relation to guiding principle, every coach has a guiding principle. I mean, Ruzi had, uh, he, he came out famously and said, look, uh, I'm never going to forget how hard the game was to play and all the rest of it. What's Nathan Buckley's guiding principle? Oh, I just think the, the harder you work, the luckier you get. And it's, yeah. um, I, I, I was talking to Hurdy um, on Thursday night mm -hmm. and I asked him what Mark Thompson was providing for him. Um, the two things he thought is that he was able to assist the, the football department in concentrating more on footy, less on the community and the external stuff. But the second one was interesting. He actually said that he was pulling his coattails and actually saying other boys have trained enough now. So as a, as a modern day, as a player who's recently retired, heard he was basically relaying to me that he felt that he needed to see the boys train more because that was his way and it's my way. Um, but um, that he had an experienced head there that was actually saying, hey, the, the boys have done enough, you've got to keep them fresh for the weekend. So I've, I've got to make sure that there's that feedback around and, and I'm sure that Mick will provide that as well um, to have that different perspective as you go forward. You're famously sure and confident that you, you, all the way through since the time you, you played at Brisbane and you wanted to get back here and play at Collingwood and it's an, an admirable trait that's held you in great stead. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's mm -hmm. what a lot of people would be saying. Is there any doubt in your own mind about taking on this job where everything seems to be going so famously, we don't know what's going to happen in the back half of this year, mm -hmm. and then you coming in and implementing a change, however subtle or, or otherwise it may be, and all of a sudden it not going as well as it is now, and you having to carry the can for that. Does that play on your mind at all? No. If there's one sure thing in this world, and Mick has said it plenty of times, that if you stand still, that you're going to go backwards. So as a football club, we believe that we haven't stood still from last year to this, and that gives us a fair chance of succeeding. And we're in decent shape at the moment. We're not at the top of the ladder. Geelong have got that spot. So we're chasing a football club in 2011. We're going to have to change and evolve to go forward in the next couple of years. Um, there, yes, there are going to be some things that don't work and you hope that you're going to be able to provide changes and tweaks that are going to make you a better side going forward. And I've got no doubt that not just myself but the rest of the football team that we'll put in place. Um, members of the football department now, Hutchie, you've asked about blokes that are contracted, blokes that aren't. We'd like to keep as many of those blokes as possible, the ones that want to stay. So we believe, as a team, that we'll be able to find those tweaks and those adjustments that are going to make us better going forward. Everyone's been really impressed with how Collingwood has responded to that back-to-back -back syndrome that a lot of clubs just don't cut it with. What, what's the single... Is it, was there a meeting? Was there a decision made? Was there a, a bit of speak between the, the players? What's actually keeping the club uh, right at the cutting edge of competitiveness after such a great performance last year? That's an interesting one, because... it. Sometimes the, the initiative or the, um, um, the catalyst can come from the strangest places, but um, Arizona to us as a football club has been, and I've had this experience as a player, it is, it is an important part of what we do. Whether it's placebo effect or whether it's the attitude training, but it's the couple of weeks to go away to put your, the past behind you, to put that hard work in and then to reset for the future. And I've got no doubt that when we went to Arizona, um, and this was Butters and Mick, um, to their credit, the way they ran it was we're going to run these guys into the ground and remind them that there needs to be a lot of hard work done to go back to the well again. Yeah. And the boys were left under no illusions when they left that camp. They knew how much work they had under the belt. Um, they were hurt uh, physically and they, they're drawing on that now. So I feel that um, you know, the right buttons were pushed at the right time and there's enough players to pick up and, and keep that momentum going. Given that you're in planning mode and all the issues we've talked about, do you fear Mick going somewhere else at this late stage? Would it, would it be a real blow now if he took another role given all that you've been through together this year or would you encourage him to do that if he came to you and said, I still have the fire in my belly? I don't think you'd ever hold anyone back from doing what they really want to do. Um, so if Mick feels that, I'd probably encourage him, you know, whether he needs, my, needs that from me or not, I, I wouldn't suggest. But um, if he doesn't want to be at the club, or anyone else for that matter doesn't want to be at the football club, and we're going through it from the player list perspective with Great Western Sydney, as you mentioned, we're going through it um, even in the coaching and football staff where our IP and our current program is, is seen as you know, the best going around. So there's other clubs that are trying to have a look at the, the people in our football department. 
if, got, if you don't want to be there, well then you don't have to be. But if you do, uh, we hope that, um, you know, that you continue to contribute to the football club in the best manner possible. Why do you think, after all these years and after the great partnership and the premiership and what you're doing now, what you've achieved as two people who are champions at their own game, coaching and playing, working together, why do you think that not a week goes by without someone on radio or in the paper suggesting this friction? Yeah, I can't understand it, Caro, um, to be honest. I think I get on as well with Mick now that, than I ever have. Um, you agree I, I, that it's, it's, there, it's out there though, isn't it? Well, it's out there. Just out there, as well but it's not in there. Yeah. Oh, well, you'll have to ask him. But, uh, well, we I, did, I think, last year. And yeah. what did he say? <laughs> I think he likes it. I think he likes it. He you well, 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 like. well, <laughs> No, he doesn't even say that. I, I'd, I'd sort of hazard a guess that it would be pretty hard for a club to have had the last 18 months that we've had if we were in disarray and yeah. there was disharmony and there was a, a misunderstanding of roles and responsibilities. I think one thing that I've been able to provide is I've been in this role for the last 12 years. You know, I've understood exactly where I've sat. Mix, mix the boss. I do my role as well as I possibly can and I support him to the hilt and, and make sure that I provide as much support as I possibly can. Um, I've, we've had no issues with that before and I'm sure Mick's very comfortable in that uh, in my, in, and trusts me with the, the support that I've given him. When this deal was cut, Colling would have been a long time without a premiership. Uh, Mick had been there 11 years. North were offering you a job, Richmond were hovering yep. and James Hurd hadn't been on the coaching landscape, let alone made a, a success of it uh, as a rookie coach. If all that had happened in the meantime, would you have still made the same decision to stay? Are you glad you waited or looking back Having won a premiership since, would you have gone in earlier somewhere else? Well, you, I can't go back. I'm very happy to be where I am at the moment. Um, Mick said at the time when the deal was struck that two years is a long time of footy and he's been around long enough and you've got to take him at his word and he's right. You know, a lot has changed in that time. Um, a lot has changed within the football club. Uh, some things that may have contributed to the, to the recent success we've had but ultimately, um, I can't have that time again, and nor would I expect to. And I'm very comfortable in the situation that uh, that I find myself in, and I'm sure the club is pretty happy with where it is. Oh, look, I'm just going to ask you one from last week again. Everyone has had an opinion on this, and leave yourself out of it. Mm. Heard, Voss, Rusciuto. Where would you put them? In what order? Um, not the, not the my position to do so. Um, I've always, I've actually, above put your, those Put above your age and Channel 7 hat back was, on again. Yeah, I can't do that. Um, <laughs> I was asked, um, I was asked through the, through the goings of, uh, th um, throughout the week last week, and uh, who was the player that I held in the highest esteem, and it was actually Robert Harvey. And it's not necessarily that he's a better player than those three guys, despite being an absolute gun, but um, we actually had I rubbed shoulders with him when I was a 17-year-old up in Darwin and, and I remember thinking that I wish I could be you and then I was commentating in 2008 looking down at Eddie Head Stadium watching Robert Harvey run around 20 years later and I remember thinking I wish I could be you because I wanted to be playing again so I just feel like um, and I felt like I took a lot out of watching him play and learnt a lot more about the game from watching him play than most other players that I watched. So he's been the one that, um, that I've held in the highest esteem. We can talk all night. Fractionally well, above the other three. Yeah. We can talk all night. We're going to let you go after this question. Uh, Greater West Sydney loom on the horizon. Are you fearful of, of losing a Thomas or a Pendlebury who only signed for that one year? Yeah, look, I think um, every football club is fearful of losing and... and some of those fears are going to be vindicated at, uh, at certain times. The difficulty now is that um, Great Western Sydney have got the two-year window, that, um, so it's sort of, that fear lingers a little bit longer than, than before, and uh, free agency sort of kicks in, and I think um, players are seeing themselves a little more as professional assets, as their own, sort of, their own entities than, than we did in the past. So we're going to go through all of that, but um, we believe at Collingwood that beyond the money that we're providing them with an environment that that is um, going to keep them there. So we hope to uh, we hope to keep most of the, all, all of those boys.